And hallelujah, hallelujah. You may sit down. Thank you again. Man, everybody's getting an exercise. The worship band is getting exercise. The people, well, it's good. It's good for your body this morning. Now, we, we want to shift to celebrating what God has been doing in our church. What God has been doing in this church. And you know, I've become the uh, lead pastor at the end of September, beginning of, of October. And I can tell you this year, 2020, has been totally different as I had imagined my first year of senior ministry to be. I never imagined that all of these things would happen. I never imagined that I would have to go through the things that I went through as the head pastor. But let me tell you, in everything, God gives us the grace, the ability, the strength, the know-how, come on, the wisdom to get through it. Hallelujah. Oh, dad and mom, I know you did not expect this, but God's grace is upon you. He's getting you through it and not only surviving, but, but listen, but to giving you life and life more abundantly. Come on. He's giving you more than you will need so you can be a blessing to others. So for a short time, I want to talk to you about a topic. It's named and titled The Start the start can you turn to your neighbor and say we're about to get it started in this place the start now it's interesting that the lord always wants to give us a word for a particular season amen he wants to get you equipped for what you are about to go to he wants to equip you for the season, for the day, for the week, for the month. Can we, can we have a smile session here this morning? Can we a smile at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're looking good this morning. You must have lost a few pounds. You're looking mighty fine this morning. I'm so glad to see you, neighbor. But God's word, and I feel like this is a word that God has prepared for us this season, for this church, for, for the season that we are going in. And it's interesting that the Lord has spoken a word to me, and, and it's found in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, if you could open up for the sake of time, I'm going to try to go at it fairly quickly. But this is the chapter that, that Jesus is preaching. There's a whole bunch of people around Jesus, and here comes a short guy his name is Zacchaeus now I know I said short yeah he was pretty probably a little bit taller than this but the Bible says that Zacchaeus was short in stature and when he heard what Jesus had to say he says I gotta see this man Jesus for myself because whatever he's saying it's gonna get me out of my circumstance and situation do you know that the words of Jesus Christ are life? He says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. I got it all, everything you need for this season. Come on. And now Zacchaeus, he hears about Jesus. He, he reads the local news and he says, I got to get me some of that Jesus. So he gets to climbing a sycamore tree and as Jesus is walking through that road now, now Zacchaeus, he calculated, he began to strategize. He says, for me to get what I need to get, I got to plan this, this thing out. And I'm so glad that you planned out your morning, that you came here into this building, that you began to watch us online. I'm so glad. You see, you got to get ready for the move of God. You got to get yourself situated. It's not about whatever comes will come. It's about, Lord, I'm here. I'm ready. I want more of you. I'm hungry for more of Jesus. Come on. And so Zacchaeus says, I'm ready for this. But you know what's interesting? When Jesus noticed Zacchaeus, he says, Zacchaeus, come out of that. Come out of that tree. I got to be in your house. Now there's a crowd and there's always going to be a crowd of people. The Bible says that they began to complain and grumble. Now I looked up the word grumble. Grumble is like, you know, speaking underneath your mouth. Huh? Well, what is this? What's going on? Come on. What's, Jesus, what are you thinking? So they began to grumble and complain. Why? Because this is not the way they would imagine the Messiah would be doing and, and doing his business. 
the way they pictured this thing was that Jesus came for the holy and the pure but Jesus says I came for the lost the broken the one who need me he has come to heal you and I to restore the brokenness to restore you hallelujah this is the mission of Jesus Christ and so you see the people there they they did not see a clear picture of the kingdom of God and so they began to grumble and to complain you know it's important that we would see a clear picture of the of, of the kingdom of God so we can operate effectively within it have you ever done puzzles anybody have done puzzles not the four piece puzzles but you know the multiple puzzles everybody can get the four piece puzzles and we're going to talk about that but you see if you don't look first at the box at the big picture it's going to be mighty difficult for you to put the puzzles together you're thinking is this a forest that i'm putting together is this outer space what am i what is this all about you see you got to see the big picture of the kingdom or else we're going to be operating from an inferior idea of the kingdom if you don't see the big picture that God wants to show you you're going to operate on an inferior idea of the, what the kingdom you're going to operate out of an inferior purpose an inferior mission an inferior uh, 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 vision and so it's vital and important that we see the picture of the kingdom of God living water church it's vital and important that we begin to understand what is it that God wants us to do in his kingdom can somebody shout amen this morning he wants you to see the picture so that now you see your neighbor everyone here is a part is a part of that picture of that puzzle and so when you begin to see the big picture then you understand where I fit where you fit you begin to understand how this thing works and that is what Jesus began to talk to them about he starts to tell them a parable now a parable is a story that reflects the heaven's principles with earthly uh, things and ideas so he begins to say that there was a nobleman now this is Luke 19 are you with me here this morning he says there was a nobleman that that had servants and he uh, calls out his servants and he says here's each one of you ten servants you get one mina each now one mina is about three months of wages so it is a very good amount of uh, money and he says go out and begin to multiply this because I'm gonna come back now there's four different pieces of this picture that I want us to get and number one picture is that we have access we have access somebody say the word access now it's interesting that the nobleman called up his servants now it's interesting that the servants they they were the servants of the household and so they knew who they were and so they had access to the house of this nobleman they were able to come into the house they were able to do things because they had an access card you know this access card you're able to slide you're able to to touch and something opens in front of you access do you know you have access to the supply house of the kingdom do you know that you are who you are because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ he gave you a, a access card he gave you an ID card there on Golgotha 2,000 years ago he says you are my child he says you are mine you are redeemed you are restored and I give you access to the heavenly places hallelujah several years back me and my wife got hooked on this competition cooking show and it's interesting I, I tried to google it yesterday I couldn't find it there's so many of them so many competition cooking shows and it's interesting that in the competition cooking shows you got a whole bunch of contestants whole bunch of people and and they and they give them the access to the whole kitchen now listen the kitchen has all of the vegetables you can ever I never even knew some of these vegetables existed 
in the kitchen there's so many fruits so many spices from all around the world in that kitchen there's fish all kind of meats everything that they might need there's appliances that i never seen before this thing is loaded this thing got everything they they need and so they got the access card to everything that they will ever need do you know you got the access card to the supply house of heaven do you know that god has given you access to power to oil to living water he says i have opened up the door i have given my sons and daughters the access card to get in there and to grab everything you need so that you can be a blessing to others amen somebody but it's interesting that these servants they didn't just begin to quote their identity but they began to live out their identity can I say that one more time somebody they didn't just begin to wave their ID cards their access cards and says oh guess what who I am oh I'm a son and a daughter of God now that's awesome but they began to live out their identity and so God is calling you and I not just to carry the ID card but to get into the kitchen and begin to work something up uh, that the world would be blessed by you and I hallelujah do you know that God has given us access to everything that is needed every single day me and my son we're walking up we're living in an apartment right now because we sold our house and we're walking up up the stairs and we see a, a, a young man on these steps and I said son God has placed him there so that we could be a blessing to him today come on have you ever met somebody maybe they're at a grocery store at that and you know it you know it God has placed them there he has placed you there so you can be a blessing to them amen somebody and I and I'm and he's like my, my son's like hey dad so what are we gonna do I said I have no idea we're gonna come up to him and we're gonna do what needs to be done because we are connected with the supply house of heaven and anything that is needed at that moment God will pre provide for us so come on somebody don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ you got everything you need at your disposal hallelujah and so we can't just be quoting out who we are listen that's so important it's so important to know your identity it's so important to know that you are a son a daughter a servant of God but don't stop at the doorway of the kitchen get into living out who you are and that's the access part of you he says I have given you the mina I have given you everything you need because in the proverb Jesus says that this nobleman gave the minus to ten servants he says I have given you everything you need can you turn to your neighbor and says neighbor you got everything you need you got everything you need and so the next thing that happens is uh, 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 the nobleman calls he comes back as king now and he calls out the servants and the the first servant comes up to this king and he says well Lord you have given me one mina and I turned that one mina into ten minas now that's what almost 1000 percent increase that's crazy if you're a businessman here listen you're wishing for that kind of income you're wishing for that kind of increase but he increased it by a high percentage point and he says the lord the king says to this servant he says well done now in the original the word well done is excellent can I tell you that whatever we do, it must be done with excellence. God has given us his best and so he's calling us to do our very best. You see, excellence isn't perfection. Excellent is just doing it the best of your ability. God, I can do this. I'm going to do the best of my abilities in Colossians chapter 3 Paul says in everything you do do it wholeheartedly come on somebody in everything it doesn't matter what you do but do it enthusiastically wholeheartedly do it as you're doing it for the Lord and not just for men 
You see, there's an excellence there. You see, the Bible says in Daniel that Daniel had a spirit of excellence. There was a spirit of excellence. He wasn't like, oh, okay, I'm just going to show up. But he says, when I'm going to show up, I'm going to do my very best. If I'm showing up for prayer, I'm going to be praying like there's no tomorrow. If I'm going to be singing, I'm going to be singing out of my best ability. Whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to do in the spirit of excellence. Come on, somebody. That is the standard of the kingdom of God. Now I'm thinking about Joseph. Joseph went from the pit to the palace. Joseph went from the pit to the palace. But listen, everywhere he was at, he had the spirit of excellence upon him. And so he was in Potiphar's house. He did things at an excellent level. And the Bible says that Potiphar's house began to grow. Wow. Potiphar's like, man, this is so awesome. Why? Because the man of God began to operate in excellence. Living Water Church, whatever we do, we need to operate in excellence. Then listen, then, then Joseph gets into prison and that prison begins to grow. That prison, not, not in a bad way grow, but that prison began to, to get be successful and clean and organized. Why? Because Joseph operated in the spirit of excellence. And so when all of this is happening, when Joseph is operating the spirit of excellence, he gets, he gets to the next level of life. Listen, if you want to get to the next level, you got to understand you got access and you got to operate in the spirit of excellence. Amen, somebody. In everything you do, Apostle Paul says, do it from all of your heart. Do it with enthusiasm. It doesn't matter if you're washing the dishes. Begin to wash them with excellence. Come on. It doesn't matter if you're doing the laundry. Somebody, whoo, I'm folding the laundry. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what you are doing, do it in the spirit of excellence. Amen, somebody. And so it's interesting. In Proverbs, it says that when you do something skillfully, you're going to work under great kings. When you do something skillfully in the spirit of excellence. I feel like God has a promotion for everyone here today. Promoting you in whatever sphere you are at. But he wants to remind you that he give you access. That you would work in excellence. So that he would promote you in wherever you are at. So that the kingdom of God would expand. You see, as Joseph was working in excellence, God lifted him up. He promoted him so that now Joseph is a blessing to Egypt. He's a blessing to other nations around him. He's a blessing to his family. There's just blessing flowing and overflowing through Joseph. It is all because Joseph had a clear picture of how the kingdom of God operates. Amen, somebody. We cannot bring, listen, in the Old Testament, they, they, the, the, the Lord had said, don't bring a sacrifice, a lamb that was broken, that was spotted, that was barely living. This thing is about to die. And you're like, hey, I'm not going to eat it anyway, so let me just give it to the Lord. You see, there is a standard of excellence. The Bible says, bring the best without spot without blemish oh we can't have you know that sickness it, it can't have you know sneezing all the way you know it, it can't have that it has to be a perfect lamb and so that is the standard that the Lord is speaking to us this morning. He's saying living water church. He's saying fathers. He's saying mothers. Whatever you do, do it in the spirit of excellence because it's for the Lord. Do it as for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. And so it's interesting that when, when Joseph did that, he was promoted. He had an adv advancement. And that's the next thing is that whenever you know you got the access card, you know you have, you have to work in excellence, then the next thing is influence. Somebody say influence. Now, this world, in this world, we, we might have the wrong thinking or understanding of influence. 
but just think as influence, not as, as manipulation. Or I'm going to manipulate someone into doing something. I'm going to influence someone to act a certain way or to do something. But think of influence as adding value to somebody. Think of influence as adding value to someone today. Adding value to someone's life. Adding value to somebody's uh, uh, family. To someone's business. Adding value. And when you add value, that brings out influence through you to whoever you're talking or whoever you're walking around. And so we have to understand that, listen, Joseph was everywhere he went, he was adding value. He was adding value in that prison cell. He was adding value in Potiphar's house. He was adding value in, in Egypt, uh, in the high leadership roles. He was adding value. And I got to ask myself, well, well, Emmanuel, how is Living Water Church adding value? Come on, are you with me here today? How, is, how am I adding value to wherever I go? How is my family adding value to society, adding value to people's life? We have to add value to people's life wherever we go. Amen, somebody. I think that was pretty good. Can you give God a shout of praise? Adding value. Hallelujah. The Bible says that, that the nobleman who became the king he called the servants to him and the first servant that that had a huge increase from a one to ten he came forth and he says lord my one mina has increased to ten and the lord said to this first servant he says well done this is luke chapter 19 i believe verse 16 he says well done servant well done servant so in the view of everybody else he began to lift up this so he began to recognize recognize the servant do you know that God gives you and I recognition not so we would boast not so we would be prideful but so that we can speak life over people all around us amen recognition is not made for pride recognition is made for you to begin to add value to people around you and i'm so glad this tuesday if you would tune in to 91.5 uh victory 91.5 i'm gonna be on the radio from seven to nine from seven to nine and victory 91.5 you know, I never imagined it, but you see, when we begin to do things for the kingdom of God, God will elevate our voice. God will elevate your voice. But you have to understand who you are. You have to do things in excellence and you have to not be prideful. Be humble. Whatever you do, continue on in hum humility. Amen, somebody. And so he says, he says to this servant, well done, excellent work, servant. Now I am setting you to be over 10 cities. Now what does that mean? Before when this man spoke, maybe one or two people heard him. But now 10 cities hear him. Before when this man did something, only several people heard about him. But now multiple people are hearing us. I feel like God is saying, Living Water Church, I'm going to lift you up on a place where there's going to be people around the world will hear the voice of God through you. Hallelujah. I feel it, church. And it's not for us to get prideful. It's not for us to say, check me out, check who, who, check out who I am. But it's for us to give God the glory and says, God, you are so good. God, you are so mighty. I'm so glad that so many people are received. And I'm so glad this year there's people that receive Jesus Christ as their personal savior. This year, people got healed and restored. Hallelujah. We got stories and stories of God healing people. Hallelujah. Praise God. This year has been a year of us building and growing. There's so much that has been going on this year. But the last thing that I want to talk about is after we recognize that God is lifting you up, we have to recognize that we, he does all of that to transform the nations. 
when he lifts you up, he doesn't do it so that you would be high and mighty and, and tall. But he does it so that through you, he would transform the nations. He does it that through you, he would transform people around you. Amen, somebody. He does it that through you, communities would be changed. It's hard work. Listen, it wasn't sudden that the, the, the servants went and they suddenly got all of the ten. No, it was a process. Amen, somebody. It's a process. You got to work at it. Work at it. Tell your neighbor, continue working at it, neighbor. It won't come right away. But as you work at it in excellence, as you work at it, it'll come. But you have to understand you and I are doing it because God wants to see nations, communities transformed through you and I. Isn't that right? He wants to see families that have contact with you transformed. Marriages that, that have contacted with you transformed in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. He wants the transformation of nations. Amen somebody. And so I want us to stand up this morning as we're coming to uh, ju just a quick end. A and I want to speak to somebody's life this morning. We, we have to understand what God is calling us to. And he's calling us to see in this picture of the kingdom of God at a wholesale value. This is what the kingdom is about. I am giving you access so that you, through you, transformation of the nations would occur. You got access to the kitchen so that through your cooking, you would be feeding thousands and millions of people all around you. I gave you the kitchen. I gave you the supplies. I gave you the appliances so that through you, my people would be fed. Amen, somebody. And so I want to read a verse for you in conclusion. I hope I can find it. Are you happy to be here this morning? Come on. Come on, shout like you mean it this morning. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. This is Paul saying, he says, For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. He says, you've been my partners. He says, I'm not the only one working. He says, I got people in the kitchen with me. Can you ask your neighbor, neighbor, are you, are you partnering up with me today? Are you with me? Come on, don't be afraid. It's all right. Will you be my partner in the kitchen, neighbor? Yes. yes. Thank you. I got a few yeses. And so in verse 6, he says, And I am certain that God who became, began a good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. He says, I'm confident, I'm certain that he who began a good work within you, he started something in you. What he's saying is, you are the starting line. You are the puzzle piece that gets things going. You are the one. Don't wait for anybody else. Don't wait for George. Don't wait for Bonky. Don't wait for this guy or this woman. You are the one that God has placed here to get my kingdom started and expanded. You are the one. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise. I am the one. So the question is, if God has given you access to his supply house, what am I doing with those supplies? What am I doing with what he has given me? And so the challenge for Living Water Church in this next year is to go full out and say, I'm not going to stand in the doorway of the kitchen. I'm not going to stand looking at the appliances, looking at the vegetables, looking at the fruits, looking at the chicken, but I'm going to get to work. Amen, somebody. Can we get to work, Living Water Church? We can't be happy with what we achieved before. We got to continue going. Fathers, mothers, don't be just happy and satisfied with where you're at today. Continue moving forward. Businessmen, continue moving forward. God wants to use you for His glory. Hallelujah. So let's lift up our hands this morning.
If you say, Lord, here I am, send me. Say, God, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Pray. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. For you are good. For you are mighty. For you are strong. We thank you that there is none like you. Yes, Lord, we thank you for this year. But we know there's greater years ahead. We know there's more. We know there's more. We thank you for the access that we have been given. We thank you for the identity. Lord, we thank you that you have provided everything that we need. So, Father, we're ready to have and work in the spirit of excellence. Lord, we thank you for adding that, that we are ready to add value to people's life. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Lord, and we thank you that through us, you want to transform nations. Lord, use us today, wherever we might be, whether in this house, whether on the highway, in the grocery store, at school. Father God, wherever we are at, use us to transform the nations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's sing and worship the Lord this morning for he is good hallelujah thank you jesus Full we'll